Here's how it usually goes down. You get interested in leather crafting and after a few projects where you try your hand at hand stitching, you realize just how time consuming it is and you set out to find a sewing machine. And then you soon find out that your grandmother's old singer is just not up to the task and that you need a heavy duty walking foot machine. In your research, you also find that these type of machines are expensive, some being really expensive. But during your research, you stumble across this little hand-powered sewing machine called a Chinese shoe patcher, and it's only 120 bucks or so. How great is this? Then you're reading the reviews and your bubble gets burst as many are not very positive. Some say that a little attention to set up and it's an awesome machine, while others say it's a total waste of your money. So you're back to square one, hand stitching, and wishing there was a better way. All the while, the little Chinese leather shoe patcher is in the back of your mind, making you wonder if it could actually be the answer to your problems. Well, here's the bottom line. If you're looking for a machine that is set up and ready to go with minimal time and effort, this is probably not the machine for you, and you would be better off saving your money to buy a more sophisticated machine. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer that is mechanically inclined and willing to put in the effort to learn the ins and outs of this machine, this could be a diamond in the rough that you could turn into the jewel you're looking for. If you've decided to pull the trigger and order one of these, stick around and I'll show you what I did to get mine stitching like a champ. First off, cross your fingers and hope that you get a machine that's not broken or one that has a lot of flaws. There's a bit of luck of the draw in this matter. You can always return the broken machine, but from what I've seen, the large majority of customers get a machine that's workable, just needs a little cleaning and tuning to get it set up and going. You will need to build a sturdy stamp-free machine as the one that comes with it is very flimsy and useless unless your plan is to set up a shop on a street corner in Pakistan and patch shoes, it's not what you need. First thing I did to mine was attach it to a piece of scrap plywood with a couple of screws just so I could get it cleaned up. I went over the entire machine with mean green and a rag getting as much of the oil off as possible. You don't want oil stains on your leather so you need to go over it maybe once or twice. Also at this time look for any sharp edges or burrs that, caught, that could cut you or scar your leather. Take a file or sandpaper to these areas to get them smooth. Next, I set about making a proper stand to mount the machine to. I had a 3x3 three three inch block of wood that I shaped on the bandsaw and then screwed this to a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. This works for me as it's a good size to clamp to a bench top and can be stored out of the way when not in use. Alright, let's take a look at our thread path, starting with our spool here. And you can see I put a little uh, plastic piece, this was just a container, a top off of a a container, I'm not sure what it was, I think it was something that held tape or something, but this has got a smooth edge on it so as our, our uh, thread drapes across it we don't have any snags. And then it comes up here to our needle arm and goes through this hole, the second hole. The first hole is an oiling hole, but the second hole the thread passes through this arm down to our tensioner. We got these two wire guides, it goes behind the wire guide into the disc and back up to the wire guide. And you want to take and pull that thread on both sides to pull the thread into the disc so that it's so it's seated good and, and uh, has tension there. And then uh, you can, if you're using heavy thread you can, and you need more tension, you can use this second uh, tensioner. But right now I just have mine. It sits in the bottom of the disc and it works fine right there without uh, using it as a tensioning feature. And then our thread comes straight across to this little coil uh, it's like a, a par partial spring and goes through there up again to our needle arm in this little uh, bird beak or uh, I think they call it a, a peacock and through that hole. Then it comes down, if you can see it here, through this needle tube here and you have to take and run your wire up through the needle tube at the bottom and grab the thread up here and pull it down through. And let's drop the foot here. Then the thread comes down through the needle from the left to the right. And then you pull your uh, walking foot up and pull the thread back. And it's ready to go. Something to 
take a look at as you're threading this or as when you first get the machine is all these areas that the thread comes in contact here here up here at the top down here anywhere make sure that you've uh, gone over these with some sandpaper if there's any burrs at all if you need to take a file to anything this little wire cage here make sure that that's smooth across there the coil is smooth here Make sure that the thread is not catching on anything and causing any kind of drag that could cause a problem with your uh, tension as you're sewing. Next on our to-do list is learning about the bobbin assembly, how it works, setting the timing and tension, and loading it with thread. For starters, let's look at a few tools that I suggest you have on hand that will help you with these items. All right, here are some tools that I keep next to my machine. I've got a little short pair of scissors that I use to snip thread ends. And then I've got a right angle screwdriver and I use this to make adjustments to my bobbin cover. And then I've got a pair of little pair of needle nose pliers that I use to, uh, when I'm removing the shuttle carrier, I grab that little half moon shape that you'll see and use the pliers to pull it out. And then I've got a little magnet and I use that to grab the bobbin and pull it up and out also the shuttle to pull it up and out uh, it's not quite strong enough to get the carrier that's why i need the needle nose pliers and then i've got a little 1 8 inch screwdriver and i use this to adjust the the needle stop screw when you're uh, changing needles out there's a little uh, screw head that you'll need this little screwdriver to adjust to, to anchor the needle and also where else do i use it on the uh, bobbin tension spring on the bobbin it, uh, you need a little 1 8 inch screwdriver for that as well. And then I've got my wire that comes with the machine and this is used to, when you're threading it, you run this wire up the needle post and grab your thread and pull it back down to your needle. All right, here's our bobbin assembly in the, in the housing of the arm and you can see the bobbin here and it sets in this little shuttle and the shuttle sets inside the shuttle carrier, which we'll see here. These are the three components of that that bobbin assembly. The bobbin itself with the thread, we've got the shuttle which has this little hook on it, and then we've got the shuttle carrier that the shuttle sets in, and this hook grabs the edge of this half moon shape when it's uh, being spun back and forth by the gears. So here's the bobbin itself out of the out of the housing, and you can see there's the, the shuttle and there's the carrier. And here's the shuttle sitting inside the carrier outside of the housing. Here you can see the little tension a tension spring. Here's the housing itself in the arm, and notice the pin down here that the uh, shuttle carrier uh, gear sets on top of. And then there's two little gear heads you see right here, and those are on the pitman arm, and they move back and forth this way. It's a rack and pinion system, and it, as the rack part of those gears move back and forth, it spins this uh, spins the shuttle around back and forth as each stitch is made. All right, here's that, that carrier that I was talking about, and you can see that spur gear on the bottom, and that has to slide into those that rack of gear on the pitman arm when you're uh, putting the, the carrier inside that house. Here we have the, the shuttle and the bobbin, and you can see how the bobbin, the thread comes off the, the bobbin and goes into this hole uh, from the inside and up outside and out this top hole. And on the back side of this uh, carrier, or excuse me, back side of the shuttle here is that tension spring. Now there's two sets of holes. This first set of holes is for heavier thread, and uh, this thread that I've got in here is 69, and it's kind of borderline. It could probably go in either one, but it has to be the matching hole. Like if it goes in through this bottom hole, it comes out through this one. If you're using this bottom hole, it comes out through this one. And depending on the, the weight of your threads, you might want to experiment with these two holes to see which works best, but typically, the the thread the larger thread would use the outside holes and the thinner thread would use the inside holes and here's that same shuttle you can see the tension spring this is on the outside now there's a bobbin in there and then it comes the thread comes out through the uh, bottom hole and then up through the top and you can see the the spring here the thread has to go behind this spring and the spring is what keeps tension on the thread all right this is the bottom of the pitman arm this is your uh, locking assembly for the, the needle. A little, there's that little screw I was talking about that you need the 1 8 inch screwdriver for. This is your presser foot, but the needle's coming all the way down in the full down position. It comes just to the bottom of this hole. 
you want it flush with the bottom. You don't want it protruding past where it will stick into your finger, but you want to be able to reach up there and feel it with your finger. And if you don't have that depth set correctly, it won't pick up the thread right and you it just won't stitch worth a darn. All right, same same view. This the hole would be down here. This is with the needle all the way down. And again, this is that little holder that holds the needle to the needle arm. And there's the little screw that locks it down. And then lastly, we've got these, these two screws that are underneath the carriage. And this one adjusts the presser foot tension. And as you screw it out, it pulls down on these springs and creates more tension on the presser foot. And then this other adjustment screw um, adjusts the stitch length. And the longer or the farther out that you screw this, the farther down this arm can come and you get a longer stitch. As you screw it in, it restricts how far this arm can come down and it gives you a shorter stitch. Something I want to show you here is uh, the timing, which is a very critical element in having this thing sew correctly. So let's open up our bobbin cover here. I like using my little screwdriver, save my, save my fingernails. And I want you to see the rotation. See that little half moon? Let me find a pointer here. This little half moon. Right now it's at the 12 o'clock position. But when you're setting the shuttle carrier in there with the gear, you want to make sure it's lined up at the 3 o'clock position right here along this line. 3 o'clock. When your crank is at the 12 o'clock position right there. And that way you have perfect timing. All right, something else you're going to need to learn to do is thread the bobbin. We've got our thread here, our little bobbin. I put it across the spool and then make a few winds here. If you can see that, we're just winding it onto the bobbin a little bit to get it started. And then we've got this little rubber wheel. We pop around this way so that it's riding on our crank. We put our bobbin spool on there and then we can just turn and load our bobbin. Keep a little bit of tension on the thread as it's winding up. got everything set up let's see how our little Chinese leather shoe patcher works here so I've got two layers of seven eight ounce that I've put a stitch groove in so I can follow that groove and I'll put a few stitches in here and then we'll turn around and back stitch it Two, three, turn around, get our thread underneath here. And again, this is two layers of seven, eight ounce, and it, the machine goes through it pretty easy. No problem. turn do some back stitching three and then here's something you want to do whenever you finish a line is reach up and get some tension give you some slack anyway in our uh, in our upper thread and then we can lift our pressure foot and our needle and pull this out and snip our threads And there, as you can see, that's a pretty good looking stitch. Now, I've also done three layers of 7-8, and it makes a pretty good stitch there. But it does, that's, that's maxed in it out. That is the, uh, the limits of this machine. And even to get this, this three layer, I had to cut a, take the drill tool and cut a little notch in my presser foot so that the needle arm 
can come all the way down. You can see, see right here, it was bottoming out and hitting my presser foot. So I had to notch that a little bit in order to do the, the three layers. And then here is uh, four layers of three four ounce, a little wallet that I sewed up. I don't know if you can see that very well. All right, something else I wanna show you quickly is over here that I uh, made a, a change on is on the, the crankshaft, this, this nut right here, uh, does not have this lock washer when it comes. So I uh, went up to Ace Hardware and got a lock washer to fit and tighten that down because from what I've read, this thing will back off, this nut will back off all the time if you don't have that lock washer on there. As you can see, the Chinese shoe patcher can be a jewel of a tool if you're willing to invest a little effort in elbow grease to get it running smoothly. If you have any problems that I haven't answered here, I suggest you go to the Facebook group and join the China Leather Shoe Patcher group. There's lots more information there and a really helpful group of people that can offer advice to solve any problems that you might have with your machine. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.